Okay, there we go. Hello everyone. How's it going? Team here and this is a BXJS weekly stream software development and stuff. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the chat right next to my window. So let's do it right now because otherwise I'll forget and then it's not going to be convenient because I won't see anything. Right. Um, I am going to do this and there we go. Okay. So today I am planning to um, play around a bit with uh, worker threads in Node.js. Uh, you might know that they have been added in Node um, 10.5 and they are still experimental. So you have to provide the experimental flag, but they are already there and they work and uh, you can do a lot of interesting things with them. So we're going to try um, very basic version, right? So we're going to try to do the say parallelized factorial. This is the best thing I could come up with. And uh, if we have enough time, we're going to do something more interesting like parallel data processing or something along those lines. Okay, um, let me think. So I want terminal. Thank you very much. Hey, Matrix, welcome to the stream. So I'm going to do npm init minus y. Um, as you can see, I'm going to be lazy again, and I'm going to be using uh, Windows version. Uh, so we got node five in 105 installed. So we are pretty much ready to go. Right? I don't think we actually need package JSON, at least for this, um, for the first basic thing, right? So, okay, uh, so we need the worker. And uh, let's see how that works. I imagine you start a worker thread. Okay, so there's actually a bit more complicated. Um, so let's see, this is the example they have, right? So you have worker is main thread is uh, worker data and parent port. Okay, so how do you pass in the worker data? Okay, worker data is passed as the um, as the parameter when you create the worker. Right? Okay, um, we don't really need to export anything in this case. So we basically have two options, right? So but um, I think it's a bit like putting the same parent and um, child worker in the same file is kind of a bit messy. So we're going to be creating factorial worker JS and uh, essentially this stuff is gonna be here, right? So we don't actually care. Right, in this case, um, I'm going to save this. So first of all, we don't really need this stuff. We don't, uh, yeah, we don't need the parent part because this is how you send the messages back, right? Uh, so we don't need this parsing. So we got the, let's say numbers, this is going to be our uh, get the numbers, right? And then return results. Um, so we don't need to parse, we just return some sort of a result, right? Okay, const results is gonna be something uh, like a number, I guess, right? In this case, so since we're calculating the factorial, and then in this case, we're gonna remove that if else, and we're gonna kill that stuff, uh, because we don't really care about that. So we don't need that promise. Right. Um, so essentially what we, we have to do, we have to start as a worker is just to say factorial worker JS, right? And then pass some numbers to it. So um, let's make it interesting. Let's say we want to allow uh, no JS, I guess, I mean, let's just go for inquirer. So I just thinking that, you know, allow the basic input. So the ask user what do you want to see? And then, um, I guess then we need npm. So npm install uh, inquirer. We're gonna use aura uh, for um, da -da 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 -da, come on, aura js, I guess. No. Aura nodes. There we go. This is what I want. So we're gonna use aura for a fancy loading icon. npm i aura. And do we need anything else, really? I don't think so, right? So we just need. Uh, so okay, const start, uh, or I guess do work. And it is I so I guess, yeah, I guess making it a promise does make sense because we need to wait. So resolve rejects, right. And in this case, it's going to be just slightly more complicated than simply resolving or rejecting on message. 
uh, or I guess it's going to be calculate factorial, and then this is going to be a number. Um, right, so we actually would start multiple workers. Uh, the typical threading approach is to spawn as many threads or workers as there are CPUs. So we are going to follow that, I guess. And uh, then we are going to... Okay, so we are going to... What do we need? So first of all, we need to say, okay, um, you know what, I think, wait a second, did I not sync my settings? I think I did, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, please delete that. Ask me again. Um, settings, user preferences. Did I not do format on save? Format on save, no. On save. I did it, right? It should be. Am I forgetting it? Or don't save true. Yeah, okay. So why is it not formatting? No, don't save it. Okay, let me just make it a bit quieter. Um, maybe mute it completely. Right, okay, whatever. Um, formats. Yeah, that looks fine. All right, so we got our number. And I guess we should start by so factorial is the multiplication of all the numbers of all the whole numbers from starting from number that the user passes and then go into uh, one, right? So first of all, if we should do it in a slightly different way, so we should say, if it's uh, if number is zero, we just return one, right? Because factorial of zero is one. Otherwise, we return a promise. And in this case, we're going to generate numbers array, which is going to be array from uh, our not with a size of our number, it's going to be spread. And then we're going to map it uh, from one, no, wait, uh, we're going to map it, we don't need this, we need an index, and we're going to map it to index plus one, right? So it's Theoretically, wait a second, I'm, I'm just need to verify that I am not messing anything up. So basically, what I want to do is I want to take that number and map it to an array of numbers that are um, essentially go from one to this number, right? So calculate factorial, say 10. So we should theoretically see array from uh, one to 10, right? Nodes index JS and there is something broken cannot find Oh, yeah, right. Um, that should be there is a flag for it. Is there a flag mention here? No node worker thread flag. Um, threads and worker. Oh, yeah, there's a medium article about that. I do remember this experimental worker. There we go. So we want that um, we want it actually to be here. And uh, there we go. Okay, so it does generate array correctly. You know what, I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna put it as a start script. Okay, so I guess we can just do this, right? So I'm gonna use npm start instead of all that bollocks. So we got the array. Now we have to find out how to get um, node CPU count, right? So we need the CPU count to spawn the number of uh, specific workers. Okay, so there's OS CPUs, right? Let's see, does that actually work? So we will it get npm starts. And uh, some Oh, yeah, right. I forgot to import the OS. Whoops. Const OS require OS, right? And npm starts. And uh, okay, that is quite a lot of information. I thought it would be like, hey, you have four CPUs. No, that's actually all the cores. So I guess we can just use. Um, okay, const C. Okay, let's call it user CPU counts. And uh, I probably should capitalize that correctly because that is not camel case. Okay, um, user CPU counts. So in theory, if I run now again, we should see no what? Oh, right, right, length, right? This is what we want. Okay, yes, yeah, so we got eight threads, uh, hyper threading on uh, i7, right? Okay. So which means we should split that array into the number of CPU subarrays. So const 
segment size, right? So we say, okay, uh, segment size is going to be numbers length. So we got the length of the array and we divide it by the user CPU count and we floor that. Um, now the problem is that's not gonna always work, I guess, or I guess we can Yeah, we can probably just uh, slice it. So we say segments and we're gonna say, um, how would you Okay, so segments is going to be an array of arrays, right? And then we just say for let segment index equal zero, segment index is less than um, no, that's not segment size, that's segments count, right? I am misnaming the things. Hey, Renato, welcome to the stream. Uh, so it's going to be segment less than segment count, then we're going to segment index plus plus, and then what we need to do segments. So what we need to do is we need to say const segment is going to be numbers uh, slice, right? So slice does does slice mutates array array slice. I'm f I'm always forgetting which arrays are uh, your stream is only for what again this crap come on like I literally have the same settings as before I don't know why this happens oh man I like I don't know I can't really do anything with it because it's, it's literally the same setup with the same OBS config so I the only thing I can do is try to restart the stream but uh, okay I was looking if array slice actually modifies the array um, new array containing elements the original array will not be modified except so this is what we want so we want this from segment index to segment in so this is the no wait segment size right no um wait a second i am now confused so if we take the number of cpus and we slice it yes yeah, so we're gonna get the size of the segment right so and then we total segments segment count is gonna be number of lengths divided by segment size. This is how we get it. And we also have to math floor it, right? I'm gonna screw up some sort of a math thing. So okay, we start this with this multiplied by segment size. And then we slice it to segment size, I guess. Yeah. Right, it's the beginning and the end, right? Yeah, okay. Um, now, okay, here's the question. Will that actually work? Am I messing things up? Okay, what am I not? Uh, segment count, segments, okay, I misspelled it. There we go. And it's, oh, right, of course. Um, segments push segment, right? So we have to push it into the array. And then after we log it, in theory, we should see what, what, what am I missing? So this should be like if segment size is zero. Oh, because right. Okay. Okay. Let's do it like this start. I'm like these signatures for slice and splice are always messing with my mind. So we're going to get start plus segment size, right? This is what we want. Start and okay. So this should now produce the correct results. I are wait a second what is what is happening so we have numbers length right this is going to be 10 because we are passing 10 here for testing we have user cpu count which in this case should be eight and we got segment size and segment count right so in theory um num numbers okay i misspelled that it's one that makes sense and then 10 is yeah that also makes sense so let's try doing something a bit more than 10 say what's dividable by 8 24 so we should get nice three yeah uh, no wait so this the yeah yeah that looks good right so and if we take something that is non-dividable so like 30 we should still get that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. 
There also seems to be... I still split it by three, right? Which is not... So this is now 10, when we should have eight. Uh, why is the segment count 10? Uh, wait, am I overthinking it? I'm all, like when it comes down to the very basic math, I always get confused and always like, am I messing something up? Right, so we actually segment count should always be eight, right? So this is actually user CPU counts. So we don't actually need that. And the thing is that uh, the problem now is that if we do this, what um, segment count undefined? What's, well, where is, where is am I using? Oh, I'm using it here in a console log. The problem now is that yes, is it won't go until 30 because the, I guess, can we do mass ceiling? Would that fix it? Yes, this is exactly what we want, right? So it will go until uh, four and then if the end is larger than the array, then slice will just return the available portion. Okay, cool. So now we have those segments. And now we have to say um, segments for each segment, right? And we now map it to worker. So we spawn each worker with one of those segments. Right, okay, I probably should uncomment all of this. There we go. So worker data is gonna be segments. And uh, in this case, we have to modify this stuff a bit. So on exit, we're going to reject right away. On message, we are going to be, I guess, I guess we we're going to have to actually await here as well. So a sync. And I'm going to await. Uh, I'm going to map it and I'm going to return new promise. So because we need to wait for all of those to resolve, right? Resolve or, uh, or I guess I guess this is gonna be parent resolve and parent reject. So resolve reject and uh, we map it. And I think we need one more. Yeah, there you go. Okay, format this. There we go. Much better. So we map it to promise. The promise will run the worker with the segment data and uh, const results right and uh, then we're gonna say console log results so okay um yeah so that should be fine which means we're gonna have array of results from each worker okay right so now we handle the worker so worker gets an array of numbers right get the it's gonna be array of numbers which means that factorial Let's calculate factorial is um, basically gonna be num array and I actually just want to do num array reduce, right? So accumulator value and it's gonna be literally accumulator multiplied by value and we start with one. And result is gonna be calculate factorial numbers and like I, really hope that I don't mess anything up. Um, okay. So in theory, 10 factorial. And something went wrong. So what is uh, wait, that is a lot of rejections received what worker script file name must be an absolute path. Aha, okay, so we have to say Okay, so we have to say const path require um, da, 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 and we say const worker path is going to be pass res, uh, I guess yeah, I guess we can just say resolve right that should make it um, so worker path what we want to pass here and uh, theoretically, you know what let's say that our CPU count is always one so we at least you know test it on uh, on a basic version, promise pending. Uh, why didn't it resolve? So we await, oh shit, okay, right. Promise all, I forgot promise all, of course. Now it should await all of those, right? There we go. And is that a 10 factorial actually? 
Uh, 10 factorial. That is 36. 28, uh, yeah, that looks correct. Okay, so now let's try putting back the CPUs so that we actually have multiple. Okay, uh, so now we got the results from workers, right? And now we get to say final results. First of all, we're gonna say try and um, catch error, reject error, right? So we reject basically with the same error, if anything throws. And uh, final result is gonna be the same, reduce accumulator value. So we just multiply whatever the workers return to us. And we start with one and final results. And uh, that should be it. Seems to be working. I mean, I guess you want to actually see much performance. So I'm, we're going to test the performance in a second. I'm just, uh, so we're going to resolve with final result, right? And uh, now let's actually implement. So we implemented the work. Now let's implement a bit of UI so that you can actually ask things. So we're going to do the inquirer thing. And da, 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 da. okay, I guess we can just put it here, const inquirer. Okay, um, let's see, inquirer prompts. Yeah, so we're gonna ask uh, what is the prompt? There should be a prompt with like enter number. Um, prompt inputs. They have examples somewhere. Oh, if I remember where though. Oh man, it's a great library and yes, this is docs, uh, prompts, question objects, type. Okay, let's just do it ourselves because why not? Type is gonna be input and name is gonna be number, right? Input number, yeah, let's call it input number and uh, message. Calculate factorial four, right? And default is gonna be 10, just for the sake of it. Okay, so uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna say we have this run method that is a sync because I wanna do then and all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna run it and uh, const await uh, so input number, console log, calculating factorial for input number, right? So we take the input, we can um, start. So let's say 20. Okay. So we ask the user, we get the number. Uh, now we need to show the spinner to make it nice. I'm gonna put it over here. Now we're gonna say uh, spinner or uh, okay. Calculating factorial. Or I guess in this case, we can just say cal calculating, right? So then const result is gonna be await calculate factorial and we're gonna say input number. So actually, you know what? I'm actually thinking we should use big int here because at some point this numbers want like, you know, numbers in JavaScript. Um, okay, and we say, how do you stop it? You say succeeded, okay. So we say spinner, succeeded result. And I guess we can just do it like this results. And uh, in theory, that should work, right? Uh, okay, something went wrong. Reject is not defined. What? Index JS 50. Uh, where is it? What's reject? Oh, right. Okay, I am. Um, yes, because I did parent resolve parent reject, right? <laughs> and forgot about that successfully. Right, okay, there we go. I should probably Yes, terminate, come on. Okay, start this, 10, and there we go. Okay, so now, first of all, let's turn it into a big int, right? Because we want, uh, 
So what we want is first of all, we want to turn the input number into the big int. Stir big int JS. So there's probably something like big int from from text or something or big int parse. Uh, Stir examples in spec specification big int. Okay, is there an MDN entry for it already? No, really? Okay. That's surprising. Uh, can I just say big ints like this? Will that work? And that means we have to say here, this is also big ints. And then let's just make sure that works, right? So because big ints are in the, uh, whoops, I am misspelling literally everything. Big ints are already in the node, so that should work, right? Yep, it does work. Yes, terminate, please. Okay. Um, how the why does it? I guess we have to do it like this. Um, okay, first of all, let's try to figure out how to correctly parse it because I am not convinced. Console log. Just to make sure that it actually correctly parses this stuff. And yeah, okay. Um, Cannot convert 10 n to big ints. Okay, so I guess like this, and that should that should work correctly, right? Yeah, okay, 10 n. That seems to be working correctly. Yes, terminate everything. So this, okay, this was a bit too much. So this parsing does work fine. Now, yes, big int i plus one. So that should also parse correctly, I think. I'm curious, console log numbers, right? So just to see what exactly do we get there? Um, calculating one, and why is it only one? What happened to everything else? Wait a second, return. Result, have parent, no parent result, please. And we're gonna say zero. Um, okay, so why is, Eh? Oh, because the number is big int now, right? Oh, okay, okay. So you cannot pass big int as a constructor to array. Okay, damn it. Um, big int JavaScript. Okay, so what kind of methods does it actually have? Uh, big int arbitrary. Okay, there's a Google article about it. That's a good start. Uh, so we got this, we got this, big int number. Okay, can you convert from big int to number? is what I'm interested in. Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question. Okay. Oh, as int. 64 max, what is this? Highest possible begin value represented as integer. No, that's not what I want. Hmm. All right, let's 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 go to our favorite thing, a console, big int. I never worked with big int yet, so I am actually Okay, so we can do this, right? This is gonna be int const bi. Let's call it bi. Bi to okay. Can I just do like number bi? Yeah, I can. Okay, so that should work. Although there's gonna be a problem if 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 we have like if if it doesn't fit into number anymore. So this approach doesn't really work here, right? So I guess you can just say for let i equals zero and i slow them b i i plus plus does that actually work console log i the yeah it does work okay so we literally have to do a for loop here to create an array okay begins bring some new challenges i guess let i equals zero n less than number and i guess we have to start from one and less than equal number then and we say numbers push i right okay so that should uh format this stuff format why why don't you format everything okay am i missing something 10 there we go okay now that looks correctly let us uh, check if that actually works and returns the expected reason. No, it doesn't. Cannot mix big int and other types. Use explicit 
Victorial Worker 6. Okay, what are you not like? Uh, oh, right. Okay, because I need to use big ends here as well. Right. And, okay, cannot big. Uh, in, I, I probably, yeah, okay. I did a reduce here as well. So we have to use big ends. Yes. Okay, there we go. And it works. Okay, cool. So it actually works. Now the question is in performance, right? So we can try to actually compare. Uh, we can try to compare how fast would it be to run with workers and without workers. So let's rename it calculate factorial with worker. And uh, let's just do um, normal calculate factorial, right? So this is going to be like number. And then uh, what we do is like, I guess we just also fill the array and do the same because I mean, it, it's kind of kind of gives an overhead here, right? So we just say, hey, uh, yeah, I guess we can just do that, right? Because this is literally all we No, we need an array, right? So we need this. And uh, return numbers, but return numbers reduce so we reduce it right and that's it okay uh format please why don't you format anything anymore for some reason on windows prettier quite frequently just breaks there oh it doesn't understand again that's curious oh huh. okay i guess we'll have to format everything ourselves now well that's a bit of a bummer but fine we can leave with that. Okay. So, okay. So, right. Um, so, I guess we need two spinners. Calculating with workers. Worker results. And then we need the same code, but we need to run it with const uh, spinner2, spinner2 normal results calculate factorial yep so we just want to do this result too okay theoretically that should work as well where's my terminal we should get exactly to the same results so now we need to measure performance like there's a bunch of ways of doing it but let's just go with the um, stupid one right so there's the um process no not child processes there's the process i think hr time i believe it's called uh come on come on come on come on hr time there we go so process is your um da -da 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 -da. so const start time it's gonna be process hr time const end time is gonna be process hr time i believe you call it with start time yeah okay so it's gonna be diff if time and done in how do you process this diff so this is what we want to do okay and we need to define this in our seconds thing okay so just put it here okay and uh yeah this should be diff time right so and we add this thing uh, okay so we actually have to Start time two. This is gonna be diff time two from start time two. Done in. I mean, the, the name for those variables is a bit messy, but uh, I guess we could actually just. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna extract all of this into a new function. Run function. Um, I guess benchmark factorial let's call it this way and in this case we're gonna give an input number oh, whoops input number and we're gonna give a function factorial function so gonna run this over this right and we're gonna give a label and this label is what's gonna be put here with label, right? Uh, that has to be, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna, instead of 
copy pasting the code all over again, we're just gonna say await benchmark factorial input number calculates worker, right? And I think this should be a sync. Yep. And then we're gonna await the same, but we're gonna await it with um, simple calculate factorial. Uh, let's call it local. Okay, so in theory, there we go. Okay, uh, in this case, local is apparently way, way faster. Nanoseconds per seconds. So um, that is, you know what? Is there, <laughs> okay, that's nanoseconds. Uh, let me think, can we make it a bit more? I guess nanoseconds is fine, right? So like in this case, obviously factorial for 10 would be way faster if we do it locally. Um, that is still faster. What about this? I'm guessing the local process might just hang actually because that is a million and factorial from million would take quite a long. Uh, the bonus here is that when you work with workers, you don't really block the main thread, right? So we actually have this. Oh, shit. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna interrupt that. Yes. Because I'm afraid that it's just gonna freeze the everything, including the stream. You know what? Let's try um, 100, 10,000. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. Whoa, I think it's frozen my. <laughs> okay. No, please don't freeze. Poor terminal. Okay, poor terminal is not expected to print out numbers like this, I guess. Oh, come on, Jesus. No. Um, you know what? Let's just skip that. Let me just kill it. Come on. Just just close, please. That was a brave mistake. There we go. Much better. Result. Um, let's just not type the re result. Let's just show it this way. I'm, you know what? I'm going to open the task manager and see if there are any rogue Node.js processes because I kind of feel like I might screw up something. No, that seems okay. Okay, let's try this one more time without actually showing the um, output, right? So we want the integrated term. Oh God, no. Oh God, no. Now, yes, can I click this, please? Okay, I wonder if that will instantiate the new one. Please tell me it will, because if it will show the same one, there we go, okay, now it works. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. So yes, uh, 10,000? Right, still faster. Okay, uh, 50,000. Okay, I'm guessing there we go. So after 50,000, this becomes way more, uh, way quicker. So we could actually, you know what we could do for fun. So we say, okay, const time. And then we're gonna return time, right? And we're gonna compare those times. So uh, time worker, time local, diff is going to be time worker minus time local console log difference between local and we actually have to subtract um so let me do this uh, the other way around right because local is going to be longer at some time it's on apologies at some point nanoseconds right okay so let's try this again, 50,000, right? There we go, so worker is done. Uh, yeah, that is quite a difference actually, that is a lot. Uh, and maybe nanoseconds is not the best here, so maybe let's try milliseconds, and then in this case 1e6, I guess. So this is now millisecond, uh, what? It doesn't seem correct. Okay. Um, so this is nanoseconds, which means that we have to divide it by thousand to put, or I guess, yeah, that should be milliseconds, right?
it definitely freezes everything so you can see the spinner is not even actually working so that is that is a bit too many milliseconds i think no maybe maybe it's okay so this should be seconds right Did it really take that much second like i mean yeah okay wait no that that cannot be right am i messing up no this is milliseconds right because nanoseconds, yeah, okay. I am messing up my calculations a bit. But yeah, there we go. So it is, yeah, it's almost two seconds slower than the worker version. And obviously, if we start increasing that number to like, I don't know, 70,000, I don't want to go to 100,000 because it will definitely freeze the hell out of my computer. But uh, as you can see, local, first of all, it blocks. So uh, the... Spinner is not showing, right? While in a worker thread, it actually shows you it correctly. And now it's already four seconds. And the larger the number will be, the longer it will actually take uh, to calculate. So I'm actually, you know what? We should also, I mean, okay, it's fine. But yeah, I think that's, uh, so how long we've we been streaming? That's been like, yeah, almost an hour. So I'd say that's a good, uh, good spot to stop. So I will commit that code, I guess. Um, you know what, where's my VSL? I do prefer my Z shell thing. Okay, we need to initialize the get. So meanwhile, you can ask questions. Um, okay, I don't really have touch git ignore. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any suggestions or you think I screwed something up, feel free to send it in the chat. We'll be more than happy to hear that. Um, or if not, well then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found something useful here. Uh, git commit basic factorial uh, comparison with worker. Um, no, how do you call it? Basic version. Let's just call it basic version, right? I hope I remember. Yes, I remember my. Okay, you know what? I need to read me MD, right? And we're gonna say, okay, basic factorial with worker threads. Um, a simple app that demonstrates that demonstrates usage of worker threads in Node.js. App calculates factorial for given number using threads using worker threads. Uh, it's spawns according to number of user CPUs and uh, using simple array reduce method. The result, uh, the timings for results are then compared are then presented, I guess, for comparison. There we go. I no, I did misspell something. God damn it. Okay, um, get status, get add readme, get commits, add readme. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Okay. Right, now we need to create the repo and uh, we're basically done. That's, I mean, it's quite easy to use them actually. So I am uh, really quite surprised for the ease of use and the performance they actually give. So I, I'm sure that, you know, factorial might be not as impressive. Node worker factorial. Um, so let's just copy this simple app that demonstrates user to work it. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, just calculating factorial might not be as impressive, but thinking about stuff like, you know, parallelizing, um, oh, come on, I didn't copy it, I copied it, there we go. Parallelizing data processing, for example, in Node.js, I mean, you still could have it very efficient with um, stream processing. This is at least what I use when I process like gigabyte sized files, right? But now you can actually parallelize it. So that means you can be even more memory and CPU efficient because, you know, par parsing can be quite, um, 
expensive. And in this case, it actually makes it way, way, way simpler. I probably should add some line breaks because this does not look very nice. Get status, get and uh, get commit uh, format readme. Uh, no, 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 no. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay. Should really configure like password this push and commit signing as I did on my Mac, but I'm, I'm too lazy to do that on Windows. There we go. That looks better. All right. Um, yeah. That's basically it. Doesn't seem like there are any questions. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found at least something useful here. I think I definitely now know how the worker thread works and that they are relatively simple to use. Um, definitely going to be using them more. Seems to be pretty stable to me even now. And the errors are making sense, you know. So no major problems so far, at least with the experimentation. Yeah, if you have if you're watching this on YouTube and have any comments, feel free to post them in a the comment section or join our Discord server for uh, discussions there. Thank you for watching. And as usual, I see you next time. Bye bye.